Hello everyone, I'm Caroline. Welcome to this lesson of English for 11th year high school students. Today we're going to go over sequencing words, ordinal numbers, and linking words. So, let's start with sequencing words. Sequencing words help to indicate the order in which a series of events occur. They are commonly used in summaries, recipes, daily routines, and more. Ordinal numbers are a type or an example of sequencing words. As their name suggests, they indicate order. And the ordinal numbers are first, second, third, fourth, fifth, primero, segundo, tercero, cuarto, quinto, and so on. And ordinal numbers are typically formed by adding the suffix th to the end of the regular number. Uh, there are a few exceptions and I'm going to go over them. The exceptions are uh, 1, 2, 3, and 5 change to 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 5th. They don't just add the th, they change the spelling and the pronunciation uh, almost entirely. Then there are some numbers that only change in spelling. For example, 9, 8, and the numbers that end in y. 9 changes to 9, so we drop the e. 8 changes to 8, we just add the h because we already have the t. And the numbers that end in y change the y to an ie. So, for example, we have 20th, 30th, 40th, and so on. Another thing to remember is that the suffix th is always added to the last part of the number, to the last digit. In addition to ordinal numbers, there are certain words that are sequencing words that can replace ordinal numbers when we are uh, talking about a sequence of events. For example, first can be replaced to firstly, first of all, in the first place, to begin with, or to start with. Middle steps in a process can be indicated by saying next, later, after, after that, or then. And we can indicate that something is the last step in the process by saying last, last of all, lastly, in the end, or finally. Now that I've explained sequencing words and ordinal numbers, we're going to move on to linking words. Linking words are used to connect ideas or sentences in English. They can be divided into two broad categories, conjunctions and transitions. Conjunctions are used to connect two or more ideas within a sentence or to connect two or more sentences. The most commonly used conjunctions are coordinating conjunctions, and they are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. An example of coordinating conjunctions connecting two ideas within a sentence that is inside of a sentence would be she likes reading and painting. And an example of coordinating conjunctions connecting two sentences would be she wanted to be a doctor, so she studied a lot. As you can see, if we're connecting two sentences, we need a comma before the coordinating conjunction. And finally, we have transition words. They are used to guide you from one idea to the other. They help to create cohesion within ideas, sentences, or paragraphs. Some common transition words are before, whenever, while, afterwards, however, though, although, even though, meanwhile, in spite of, instead, conversely, similarly, for instance, for example, in order to, because, and do to. An example of transitions connecting ideas within a sentence would be I decided to wear the red shirt instead of the black one. And an example of transitions connecting sentences would be You can come to my house whenever you're ready. In the description of the video you can find a link to download a very complete list of transitions so you can study them. Thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye!